Welcome game design students. In this lesson we're going to learn how to make a door for our ball game that will open when we reach a certain score. So let me show you what that looks like. I apologize for my terrible gameplay, but we're going to give this a try. Let me show you what that looks like. All right. So I have a teleport platform that takes me up to this ramp. And when I go down to the door I have here, you can see that it won't open and it gives me a little message that says that I need to get um, that I need to get more points before I can open the door. So I'm going to go get more points. Try not to hit the platform. There's ten. We'll go see if we can open the door now. We can. And the door stays open since I have enough points. I can go inside the little room here if I can ever get in there. And I can just move in and out of the space and the door stays open no matter what. So that's the way we have it set up. So let's take a look at how it works. So in order to make this happen, we need a couple of things. One of the things we need is a door. And this is simply a box that I have scaled to fit this space. And we need a trigger volume. And the trigger volumes, of course, can be found under volumes right here. And the trigger volume needs to cover the area that you want your player to move in and out of. And then we need a variable that will tell us whether the door is open or closed. And we also need a cinematic, which is an animation for the door. And here is the cinematic or the level sequence that I have created. So here is a copy of the door that I made right here. And you can see in my world outliner that it is named door, door 2. And I'm going to um, rename that door 0 to. So now we can animate this door. So to animate this door, to create our level sequence that makes it open, we need to go to Cinematics, Add Level Sequence, and we need to name the level sequence something. And this is going to be door open 0 2. And here is our level sequence that's now called door open 0 2. And we need to animate something, and we need to add a track. So click this green button and go to Actor Sequencer, because this is what we're going to animate is an actor that's already in the level, and select Door 02. And our playhead appears in our timeline right here. Here is the keyframe button. And what we're going to animate is this door going up and down. So that is under Transforms. And we are transforming the location of this door, not the rotation, not the scale. And the direction that we're animating is Z. And this goes up and down, as you can see. So let's set a keyframe for Z. And then let's move forward a few frames and raise the door. And now we have a level sequence. Before we can use it, we need to do a couple of things. Right now, this level sequence is very long, and if we use it, it's going to open the door and then play all of this space. We don't want that to happen. We just want it to play this much space. So grab this little um, red line here and drag it up to your the end of your sequence. It should be only as long as the animation. And let's play that and see if the speed is right. I think that looks good for me. Notice it doesn't play beyond where we defined our area here. And then we need to right click in the level sequence in the timeline somewhere. And under properties, we need to say when finished, we want it to keep its state. We don't want it to repeat, in other words, because if we don't do that, it'll reset each time. And we don't want that. We want it to stay open. Once we've done that, we need to click on this little disk icon to save what we've done. Now we've saved it. And we now have level sequence door open 02 in our content browser.
the programming that's going to run the store is going to live under the level blueprint. So open up your level blueprint, and here's the programming that I have already done. You can see that we have an on actor begin overlap. That means when the player runs into the trigger volume, and we'll work on that in just a minute. And then we have a branch statement that checks to see if the door is open. If the door is not open, then we want to look at the target score variable, check to see if it's greater than five. And if it is greater than five, we're going to play our animation and set the door variable to is open. If it's equal to or less than five, then we want to display a message. And if when we leave the trigger volume, we don't want anything to happen, then that's what this branch statement does. So let's delete all of this and start over again. So I've deleted everything, and this is what it should look like for you. And the first thing we're going to need is a variable for the door. So under variables, click plus, and then we're going to name this is open. And this is the variable that's going to run our door. Now we need to set a default state for this variable over here. And before we can do that, you need to compile, even though there's nothing to compile. And that will bring open the default state. The door is not open, so we're going to leave that alone. And the type is Boolean, true or false. Now let's return to our level. And we need a trigger volume for this. So let's go to Volumes in our Place Actors window and drag a trigger volume out. And for some reason, my trigger volumes end up in the air. So I don't know if yours do that, you might want to look for them there. So scale the trigger volume up to cover the area that you want the player to um, run into, position it properly. And then with that trigger volume selected, go back to the level blueprint, right click, and select Add Event for Trigger Volume 2. And the event we're going to add is a collision, and it's going to be an on actor begin overlap. And then go ahead and do the same thing for an on actor end overlap. So you should have these two things in your blueprint at this point in time. And so the first thing we're going to do is check to see if the door is open. So drag the door open variable out into the slate and get it. And go ahead and copy it with Control C, Control V, and put it down here because we're going to do this here too. And then we're going to need a branch statement. So type in branch, and we're going to check the variable. And then go ahead and Control C, Control V, copy that, and pull this out here and connect it like so. And that's all we need to do for this one. Now, if the door is not open, in other words, if this is false, then we need to check the score. So we're going to cast to. the rolling gain mode. And anytime we do that, we need to get the game mode or the player character or whatever we're casting to. And the reason we're casting to rolling game mode is because that is where the target score variable lives. So we're going to get target score. And then we're going to compare it to the number that we set here. In my case, it's going to be 10. I'm sure it can be something different in your case. Connect these two nodes like so. Now, if the score is greater than 10, then we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is play our animation. But if it's less than or equal, if it's less than or equal to 10, then we're going to print string it's going to say you need more points. And we need 
can also do that if it's less than 10. Now, if it's more than 10, actually, I have 100 written there. If it's more than 10, then we need to play our door open animation. And to do that, we need a reference to that in our blueprint, and we don't have one. So to get that, we're going to undock this window here. And then we're going to make this window smaller so I can see both of them. Then we're going to return to our level and find the door open level sequence that we created. This is door op open door one. And this is door open O2. I want door open O2, so I'm going to drag it from the world outliner into my blueprint. This is the only way you can do it. You have to drag it from the world outliner. You cannot drag it from the content browser. Then I'm going to dock this again and expand it, and we can continue working. Now we need to get the sequence player. So the only way we can do that is to drag off of here and type in sequence player. And we're going to get the sequence player. Once we have the sequence player, then we drag off of that and type in play. And what we want to play is just play. That's all we want. We don't want any of these other ones. We want just play. And then we can connect that here. So what we're saying here is that the score is greater than 10, or whatever you set it to, then play the open door animation. And then we need to set the door variable to open. So drag the door variable out into the slate and click Set Open and connect it. And when this happens, we want to set the door to is open. And then let's compile and save and play test. So if I go hit the door, it tells me I need more points. So I'm going to try to get more points. I'm so bad at this game. Don't want to hit that thing. And it still says I need more points, and the door does not open. Why is that? Well, let's look at the code. I am setting the door to open, and I'm comparing, but what I'm comparing with here is 10. So if the score is equal to or less than 10, it's going to, the door is not going to open. So I need to change that to 5. I think I did that last time I did this. Compile and save and play. And the door should open, and it does. And it should stay open, no matter how many times I go through there. And that's how you make an opening door based on the score for our rolling ball game. And I'll see you in the next video.